Hi, welcome to Inside the Moms Club, where being a mom is the coolest place to be. Here in the Moms Club, we believe that what embarrasses you now will make a great story later. And let's face it, if you don't laugh sometimes, you're going to cry. Join us in having a good laugh together. I'm Monica Samuels. You are now inside the Moms Club, your private destination for all things mom. Hi, moms out there. Welcome to Inside the Moms Club. I'm Monica Samuels, and I'm here with my co-host today, Jennifer Marsh. Hey, Jennifer. Hello, how everyone. are you? Thanks for having me. Now, you've heard stories before. I know a couple of times you've come to the show, and it's taken you, like, you just come in at the last minute because you were taking your son to school. That's right. And now he drives, so now you have to, now you, on oh, his goodness. own. Yeah. Oh, but goodness. today you rushed in from taking your puppy to obedience school. Yeah, so I, tell I, us okay. about obedience what school happened. would be a kind way of putting it. Um, our very sweet puppy who's adorable and you, you would walk up to him as he's a fluffy, adorable cavapoo. He um, has some anger issues. Apparently he's lacking confidence is what is the initial assessment. So he has to go be um, learn how to deal with his lack of confidence and anger issues such that he won't bite people <laughs> because currently he is, he's like Jekyll and Hyde. You will walk in the door and we do this whole protocol where like we slowly introduce new people and he, you're petting him and everything's going great. And then just out of the blue, he'll be like, Rawr! and he will bite you. He'll bite your hand. He, especially he likes to like sneak up behind people and bite them the back of their leg because he doesn't have a lot of confidence, but he also kind of wants to make the rules and tell you what. So he doesn't really know his pecking order because we have three dogs and um, three people in the house. So we have kind of a big pack. And uh, so uh, I'm sure the assessment will be that there's something wrong with me and my pack. So you have three dogs and two children. Yes. Oh, okay. And how do you, he's, you say he's the, he's very sweet. He's, he's so, very sweet, but, and but he bites people. So. Yes. Well, so just like so many things when you're a mom, you, you realize you end up having to become an expert in nutrition and health and all of these things. But now I'm becoming an, uh, taking a deep dive, going down the rabbit hole into dog behavior. And apparently there's all these kinds of aggression that dogs have. So our sweet Otis has aggression. He has possessive aggression around me specifically and, and whatever adult is giving him attention. He does not like to share attention. So he has possessive aggression around that. I don't know how sending away is going to solve that, but apparently this woman is magic. Stops so the aggression at your house for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> and then works. there's, there's also defensive aggression, which is when he like sneaks up behind people and he, he's like the best offense is a good defense or I guess defense is a good offense. And he bites them from behind and is basically saying, get out of my space. I don't want you here. And then there's um, territorial aggression, which is, I think one of our biggest issues. He doesn't like anyone in our house. That's not in our pack. And he is very, so he's bark, 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 bark. And we, again, we have ways of making this not happen, except that it just, it's a lot. It's not casual. So when, when my youngest son, when Chase was a baby, he used to bite our older <laughs> child, Jared. <clears throat> and, you know, you can't send your baby to obedience school. <laughs> so you can't. With your kids, you handle it totally different. But with your dog, you... You know, you couldn't have managed to figure out this. How did, so say say that Sam used to bite Sydney. I don't know that he ever did, but like yeah. if that had been an issue, what would you have done then? Because in this case, you found, you studied it. You found a great obedience school. Yeah, I'm actually, I, what do I, you do? You know, I mean, I guess you can reason with a baby. I don't know. What, 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 Somewhat. what what's the different thinking in sending a pet off to take, do all this adjustment but you because it's you socially acceptable two. to send a pet off and it's not just not a child, a child off. Off. <laughs> no. okay cool. I, so that we, makes we total laugh. sense I we guess. laugh because we're like this is kind of like military school for the dog yeah. um and not i you know i'm not knocking go to boarding it. we're school, thinking about but, sending luca there too i can't wait to see how otis yeah, turns out because luca needs some i mean work. it's you know honestly there are times in your life where you just have to realize like 
I don't have the bandwidth to do this well. And um, even, even I, I understand that if I really worked at it, I could do it well, but like too many other things would, that are a higher priority would struggle. I wouldn't be able to get able, I wouldn't be able to do the things that are a higher priority if I had to really solve this problem because it's such a complicated, time consuming task. So I'm handing it over to the experts and it feels like a, um, it, it felt like a weight lifted, honestly, although we'll miss him. <laughs> yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> we will. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, and these are the kind of things that we advise we share with moms on the mom mom's club. So, you know, if your pet's bothering you, it's time to well, send it's, them off it's, to school. You, maybe you could do it for yourself. Maybe you could train the dog yourself. But in our in this case, it's just a matter of making priorities. You can't do everything well. Yeah. Sometimes you have no, to I think hand it over to experts and let them take over. That's what we've. Yeah, yeah, that's good advice here on the Moms Club. And you know, believe it or not, we are not the only moms podcast out there. There are others, um, many others actually, but you know. Well, it's we funny like to listening think... to them is how doing this kind of started to make sense because I was like, you know what? There's so many interesting conversations out there. There had. are, there are. And there's so many different mom perspectives because we're all coming at different places as moms. So. It's always exciting and fun to hear from other moms who are also doing moms podcasts. And today our guest is one of those moms. So we're very excited to have a woman who is a TV development producer. She is the co-host of a mom pod podcast called Hi, My Name is Mom with her friends, Corey English and Kayla Kinney. And her husband is best-selling parenting author, Adrian Culp who you can check out his website at dad or alive. So we are so happy to have with us today, Jen Meyer Kolb. Hi, Jen. Welcome to the Moms Club. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Well, so tell us so the way I'll just share with you. We can just talk mom podcaster to mom podcaster. So the way we started our show is we are genuinely a mom's club. We're friends who have been together through thick and thin for many, many years over lots of issues. Now we're dealing a lot more in lately pet issues because we all bought pandemic puppies at the same time. So now we're now, now you, yeah, play dates. We did, we had a puppy play date the other day. Um, so we do that now, but you know, so, and our kids, a lot of our kids are a little bit older. The kids, your kids are, you have four kids. Is that correct? I do. I have four. My oldest is 12 and my youngest is three. So I'm sort of simultaneously still a new mom and also a mid-season mom. I'm kind of uh, dealing with that identity shift and that transition right now. So but, how did you start your podcast? How did well, that start? I love here. I actually love hearing your story because our podcast has very similar roots. Um, my co-host Corey English actually started a blog called Hi, My Name is Mom years and years ago when she first became a mom. Um, and she she always felt like the voice of it was missing. It was missing something. And we've been friends for about 25 years since you know we both lived in Los Angeles and we wound up both living in DC together. And then we moved to Nashville at different times and met our other co-host Kayla Kenny and we just you know we we're having these really frank conversations about mom life we always say that we're very real relatable and raw um, we sort of tell it like it is we don't hold anything back and you know we're, we're dropping the kids off at preschool and elementary school and then sitting in one of our kitchens and just sort of like shooting the ish you know and we thought these are the conversations we really need to put up in front of a mic and you know, for, for us being moms, the three of us are entertainment um, professionals. I'm a reality TV executive producer. I've done it for 25 years. It is in my blood. It's, you know, dare I say, as important to me as my identity as a mom. It's, it's part of a huge part of who I am. Um, Corey is a voiceover artist and a um, singer, songwriter, actor, and uh, Kayla is an entrepreneur and also a uh, singer songwriter. So we have these entertainment roots that for us, we felt like we needed to be constantly creating and pushing out content. And we just thought, you know, this is the most organic way for us to do this right now. It's just really as simple as that. We're like, let's do it. How old are the other the moms, are their kids really young too, or what are the age? The they ages are. Wrong? We all we all have really young kids. Um, so, like I said, mine are mine are twelve, ten, almost eight, and three. And then Corey has a almost nine year old, a three year old, and a seven month old. I think mm -hmm. I I hope I get that right. And then um, 
Kayla has a, a new one. Hers is a year and a half. And so she's still in the, you know, trying to conceive phase and not quite done with her family. So um, we're in similar but different parts of our mom journeys. So you're, how do you come up with the subjects that you talk about? Because I think what you would discuss, like a lot of times what we discuss is, oh my gosh, we just bought our kid a car. You know, yeah. that's, they're, now they're going to be on the road. But that's a little different than when you've got a three-year-old. So where do you come up with your material and how do you, what do you decide about you know, what we're going to discuss Honestly, on our show? It, it's all, it's all very organic to our lives. You know, as you mentioned, my husband is a, um, a parenting blogger. He's actually, he's actually a music producer and director and like that's his sort of day job. But for the past, well, now 12 years, um, he was a full-time stay-at-home dad and he worked for Adam Sandler and Chelsea Handler uh, in development before that. And then when we had Ava, when she was four months old, he found himself during the writer's strike out of a job and at home. And here I was going, well, you know, if you're not home, we are not paying for a nanny. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you're at home, yep. you're doing it. So uh, he actually, very similar situation to Corey, Kayla, and myself, and that is that he sort of found himself in need of a, a dire creative outlet. And from that, Data Alive was born, and um, it's been adoption for TV and film, and he's written six books, and three of those are, are Amazon bestsellers. And he's done a, a really great job sort of crafting a career out of that, and then now that he's transitioned into music producing, you know, Life 2.0 is sort of at his feet. So it's it's been really interesting because for us as a family, we have had a very distinct shift in roles and in, in positions. Um, when my first three kids were born, I was still working 60 hours a week. Um, wow. And it was, it, was a, it was a lot. And with our last baby, it was a very conscious shift for us because I, I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom in some capacity and I wanted to experience that. And so we decided, all right, well, I'm going to stay home. I'll take on, you know, some minimal development work and, and projects working for companies and with talent that I, you know, really believe in and try and do it from home. And so that's what I've been doing the past two and a half years. And it's been a really interesting shift in dynamic. So all of our content comes from that. It comes from, you know, my daily life, Corey's daily life, Kayla's daily life. Um, one of our, <laughs> one of our episodes this past week was about, Kayla driving to Florida and her daughter getting car sick in the car after eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And she's in a deluge and couldn't stop. And when she finally was able to stop, she goes to the back and she opens the door and her 18 month old is sitting there pristine. The sandwich <laughs> went somewhere <laughs> back in the, the mm -hmm. mouth. Yes, oh. we, have a lot of, <laughs> we have a lot of situations like that that are just yeah. sort of like, a kickoff sort of topic conversation and they spin off into a lot of other things. Um, I have a, a three-year-old who is currently mimicking everything she hears. And unfortunately my eight-year-old thinks it's very funny to teach her bad words. So that's oh, been, fun. that's been a lot of fun. We, I walked in the house the other day and, and Evie walks right in and looks at my 10 year old and I'm not going to cuss. I promise for anyone waiting to bleep this <laughs> yeah, I walk right in and she looks at my 10 year old and without missing a beat goes, Charlie, can you turn the bleeping air down? And I went, what did, what did you say? I'm sorry, what did you say? She looks right at me, she goes, I said, Charlie, can you turn the bleeping air down? And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> That's what I thought she said, I just wanted to make sure. But just yeah. so we're clear, mm -hmm. we don't use that bleeping word ever, right? So I don't know, the kids, kids sort of write their own, I feel like write their own funny situations and their own comedy. Oh, oh there yeah. too. I mean, yeah. I, think, Absolutely. I feel like half the reason we get together as moms is just to have a shared experience around all of that. Yeah. I mean, it's and to be able to sort of like walk away with a bunch of adults and be like, I'm not insane. This is crazy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, it goes um, on. I mean, it, I mean, we've been through, you know, really our kids, some of them have been in school for 12 years, and then we went through college applications together. And so we've been through the whole journey. And all along the way, we look back and we're like, oh, remember when we thought that was a problem? Now these yeah. are like, that's a nothing problem yeah. compared to, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what we always tell the moms, you know, the younger ones, hey, yep. just, just wait. Just well, wait. And, we do we and, talk about this a lot. Well, yeah. and you're talking about the, the bleeping issue, which I'm not going to say anything either. But the other day, my son was upset about his football team. Now he's in college and out of his mouth flies, what the blankety blank, blank, blank. Well, I initially, I just immediately hollered my husband's name like mark 
you can't say that. He's like, my other son's like, that's not Mark. That's your son. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> that word, his father uses it so much. It just triggers me to... Yeah, they all just become one giant male in that my house. I like, I'm like, but Sam, John, Chad, what you yeah, person, whoever, male, whoever. male person. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the other thing you're gonna see too. So our my oldest son is now moving out. So oh, it's it's, it's terrible. Now we're not gonna have an IT guy. I mean, <laughs> like I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm like, I can't watch TV anymore. I can't use my computer. I mean, the minute something goes out, I'm just gonna have to go to the one that's working until. Well, you have a very happy home environment. He will come back and visit. That's what kept him from moving. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. yes. We had our, yeah. So accommodating. The pool, He'll the come place back. to He'll exercise. Come back. Yes. Yeah, we expect to see him, but it's kind of a shock to the system that, you know, now I'm going to be a little bit on my own on, on that score. I have to but, but make that's, an appointment. But that's the thing, you know, all these things, you're like, you're just bringing back memories of things when they were, oh, yeah. when my kids were little. And that's the thing. At that age, the material never stops coming. Oh, no, it doesn't. Because they're so it, cute. It, and, it, and, you're, and you know, I mean, it's, it's, half of your mom journey is your relationship with your partner, your relationship with your other mom friends and how you sort of, how, you know, th those things, those situations are things that we talk about every week as well. You know, we definitely mm -hmm. have um, a lot of conversations about just mom life. You know, when you parent differently from your village, um, your S E X life with your husband and what that looks like after kids, you know, being done nursing and ready to have your boobs back and what all that looks like. I mean, there's our, when I say we don't hold anything back, we truly do not hold anything back. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty raw. Well, that's great because I feel like those are the kind of conversations that as a, as a mom, you really need, you need. You, otherwise you feel like you're going through it alone. And do you, you remember, like, what, well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I, I feel like, I mean, again, I, I, I assume that one of your um, co-hosts, when she talks about angel babies, that she had miscarriages. And that's, I mean, I had three and um, we know lots of people who had trouble with infertility and um, and people don't talk about it. And no. it's the kind of thing that people suffer in silence. And I love that you just have it out there and it's a thing that obviously she's been through and it changes you and it changes your marriage and it changes your motherhood. It just, it you can't it changes everything and and there's there's two different things there right because miscarriage in and of itself is is a very tragic and solitary situation right it's like you have a you know maybe you're lucky enough to have a partner but it still feels like something that you just sort of take on yourself like it's this thing that you can't control and it's 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 happening to you in your body um and then the infertility journey is something that's you know just a another layer on top of that i mean corey kayla and i have all had miscarriages you know we've had maybe almost 10 between us and uh you know kayla has been struggling to conceive um for quite some time. She's had some medical situations and recently had an ectopic pregnancy and opened up on our podcast about, um, about that. And, you know, the fact is she almost died from that. And it was a really serious situation. And I think there are a lot wow. of women that if they were first time moms or first time pregnant moms would have taken what the hospital told her and just walked out, you know, and she thankfully knows her body, knows to question medical advice and, you know, She's here, thankfully, because she had the um, the knowledge and the mom friends and the community uh, to say, listen, something's not right. And they're telling me it is, but something's not right. And you're right, because when there's so many medical aspects of um, pregnancy and conception that you, I mean, you don't know any of it until you're in it. And it's, and so, so many things are common that no one talks about them. They're like, why, how, why does no one ever mention that, like, you know? we all know about miscarriages now because we have we can we can determine so early that we're pregnant right so you can really you know a lot of people just didn't wouldn't they're like oh my i was late for my period but no actually you were two months late for your period and that was a, a you know, miscarriage right. you know so um it's crazy to me um you, how well do how, you remember um, oh sorry it, we have a little bit of a delay i apologize if i'm st stepping over you a little bit no go ahead oh I just gonna say do you remember the book uh the girlfriend's guide or a girlfriend's guide to pregnancy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I read with it. my first, and it's probably still out, right? But with my first, it was the book that I read that really helped me because it was like finally someone's not sugarcoating this process and someone isn't telling me all the things they think that I want to hear. They're telling me the really hard stuff, the real stuff, the stuff that your girlfriends are going to tell you. And and that's that's sort of the 
that's the space we try and fill. I think if I, if I had to really be able to like put a, like a defining trait on it, that's it. We want to be your girlfriends that, you know, really tell you how it is and don't hold back. Now your husband, his books, aren't they, we're expecting, or if it's, there's a series of books. Yes. So he's, he's, where, where did he get his, I mean, fathers know things, but his material, like he's an expert now. So how, how does, how does an expert in parenting and a mom, mom podcaster, you know, do, do you all agree on everything or is it? How oh, no way, work? no way. And it's funny because we always say we're not experts. We're just parents and we're trying to figure it out as we go. And, you know, Adrian was in the trenches with our, you know, three kids under the age of, what was it? Four three kids under the age of five, four and a half, five, uh, for a long, long time until we had our, our fourth baby. And so he has really, really taken on a very active parenting role, you know, in our house. He's not, um, we like cringe at the babysitter title. It's like he is as active in their lives as I am in every single capacity. There are things that I think as moms, and this is what our, our season three um, premiere episode was actually about the invisible weight, the sort of the invisible bricks that the moms carry almost no matter what, like no matter who your partner is, how, how, how great they are. It's like, th there's just some things as moms that we don't, we take on. Right. But Adrian Absolutely. has been a huge asset to me. Um, and in his books are written from the practical advice of a guy who's gone through it, you know, not as a doctor or anything else. I mean, it's, it's straight up like, let me tell you what happened in, in our lives. And, and it, his first book is, is, um, we're pregnant and it's a first time dad's pregnancy handbook, which is sold uh, almost oh, very soon within the next couple of days, a quarter million copies. So he's really, um, wow. he's done very well with that book. And it's part of a, I don't even know how they say this. Is it tetralogy? It's not a trilogy. It's like a four pack. So it's, mm -hmm. okay. it's uh, we're, we're, uh, we're pregnant. And then, uh, we're parents, which is a guide to the first year, uh, we're parenting a toddler and then we're potty training. And none of those books are a how to like Adrian and I are very moderate in everything we do. And we have had kids that are medically typical to children who are, are, are medically atypical. And so we've gone through a lot of different experiences with them. And so our, and I say our, because obviously like as his wife, I read everything that, that he puts out there. And so the, the views in that book are just about our experiences with all four of our kids and how they have been very different. Our potty training journeys with all four kids were dramatically different. And, um, and that's what winds up on the pages. It is great to have your, your husband so involved like that. Cause I know one thing we talk about is moms, if something were to happen to any one of us and there was a medical emergency for any of our children, I'm not exactly sure that the, they would even know where to, who their pediatrician is. Was. Yes. <laughs> what is, was. Yeah. They, that so it's good it's good that he's he's setting that example and sharing with other uh, with and other I dads i feel like men also in a way they need the guide more because guys don't have like the mom's clubs like spontaneously. yeah we're lucky we have each oh, other yeah. i mean i feel like in, you know like the girlfriend's guide i like you i read that i read the you know how to get your groove back and uh i, I really do feel like men are wanting to step step up and wanting to play a bigger role but they don't even really know how they're supposed to like do hair for instance right. like when it's yeah. i remember i left my my left my daughter alone with my husband and he had to take her to a birthday party and she's got kind of crazy hair as she did when she was little and literally everyone was texting me they're like you must be out of town because <laughs> <laughs> your daughter's hair is cray cray <laughs> i love that i try to step back purposefully sometimes and you know really even when we're both around, it's like he can put her hair in a ponytail. I'm like, can you maybe do this? I mean, he does. He tends to do the boy's hair and I tend to do the girl's hair. But the reality is uh, he needs to know how to do that stuff. And and I don't I don't know. We did an episode about postpartum anxiety. Um, we recorded it very recently. And to me, I have suffered from postpartum anxiety since my last child was born. And I have these, I albeit kind of morbid thoughts about if something happens to me, I almost plan in a weird way for like, you've got to be able to step in and like, 
take over our lives again, you know, and, and I have like all these lists everywhere of like, here's how to run the cult house. Here's, and my assistants, by yeah. the way, back when I was working full time, they would obviously laugh. They'd fall out of their seats laughing at this. Cause I used to have like an assistant guide. It's like, here's how to run my life. It's like, here, Adrian, here's, here's how to step <laughs> back into the captain's chair, you know? Yeah. Well, part of your anxiety could be, I, I did read uh, your husband's blog last evening and I saw you all were in a tornado. Oh gosh. And you got COVID. I mean, I think you have reason to have a little anxiety after, after yeah, all of that. I mean, the tornado was really terrifying because it was at the very beginning of the COVID pandemic before everyone was quarantined just, you know, nationally. And mm -hmm. so we were all stuck at home. One of our you know, middle schools was completely destroyed. It was a, a massive tornado. And um, if it had been 12 hours before or after when it hit, it would have been absolutely incredibly devastating um because kids would have been in all of the buildings that were destroyed so wow. it yeah that was a very and and that was when we started our podcast too which is which was very hard you know we started it right before the tornado and then that bumped up right into a pandemic and so here we are expecting to be in a studio recording and we're recording via zoom every week and it was mm -hmm. really really difficult but but yeah you know adrian um writing and producing through the tornado and through covid was done from home so like everyone else right or like most right. of the country so he and i were together for years <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. we 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 know what that's like well jen uh -huh. part of our show is we have a zoomer moms who come in and ask you questions and so now we would like to welcome in our zoomer moms Welcome, Zoomer moms. I, let's introduce each one of them. We've got Helen Savage from Arlington, Virginia, and Helen is the mom of a lovely daughter, Olivia. Hi, Helen. Hi. Caitlin Nelson is from Salt Lake City, and she is the mother of a toddler and an infant. Yeah. So she is a very busy woman and a perfect audience for Hi, My Name is Mom, because she's got <laughs> kids that age. And Leslie Harrell, who has a son and a daughter. Hey, Leslie. Hey, guys. How are you? Great. Well, we're so excited. We have a fellow mom podcaster here, Jen. And let's get the first question from Caitlin. Caitlin, do you have any questions for Jen? Yes. So, Jen, I um, work full time from home. And I've just been working with my one, my daughter. She's three and had a baby eight weeks ago. So I'm getting oh. a little nervous for maternity leave to be up and to be working with two kids. So I was just wondering what advice you have for working with, uh, from home with multiple kids at home. Uh, I don't know how good this advice is, but you have to embrace the devices if you have two kids and you're working from home. I can't even fathom how difficult that is um, how, how difficult that is to do. I remember having a toddler and a new one. And I mean, first of all, congratulations, because that is just such a, that's a huge time in your life that's going to go by and you're going to look back and feel like it was just this blip of craziness, but it is so much fun. And uh, that's, that's really exciting. Um, a couple things. So for me, working from home or working from an office, the bottom line is that you cannot be all things to everyone all time every day. It's impossible. You know, you cannot give 100% to your job, 100% to your husband or partner, 100% to your kids, um, and 100% to yourself. Like something's got to give. You know, there's only 100% of that pie. So some days you're going to give 85% to your job and you're going to feel like you have nothing else to give. And other days, you know, you're going to have to give 40% to your kids or 60% to your kids and your job's going to suffer. And, you know, there's just, there's a misnomer in our country that you can be all of these things and you just can't, something will have to fall short, but sort of hopefully what happens is at the end of the week, the way your time has been divided and the way your focus has shifted has sort of equaled out and everything from your job to your spouse, to your kids have felt and yourself I always forget that. That's honestly one of the most important pieces as well. Um, hopefully all those those pieces wind up getting the same amount of, of love and care and attention because they're all really important and very integral components of the same pie. That's great. Thank you. Sure. And Caitlin, oh, I know that your, your eight-week-old has been suffering a little bit of a little colic. Is that correct? Yeah, he has. Which can be a little it's challenging. Getting... 
a little better, but um, yeah, he's actually here with me right now and not throwing. Fit, I, so. I saw a hand. Yeah, I saw oh. a hand thrown up. And I, I was talking to Caitlin on the phone the other day, and there was a lot of screaming over everything else. And I thought, what a trooper that she's sitting here having this conversation with me. So I don't know if Hi My Name Is Mom has covered colic, but it's a very I mean, I know a lot of moms out there would. Well, I was about to say, there's, yeah, there's, there's no much. little amount of colic. All colic. No, like I know. It's like, I, I don't know how you deal with that. But he's being very well behaved. So good. Yeah, he's great right now. That's that's an incredible position that you're in right now. You know, we I've had babies with like reflux and GERD and things like that. But I have never had a colic baby. I have had babies whose reflux, I guess, which is sort of a, a version thereof, right, is makes it so bad that he wasn't able to sleep very well. And it was a really difficult time um, just in general. And we've, I don't know how, what your sort of mom philosophy is, but we have co-slept with all our kids until they were, you know, two or three or really in our situation, it was until the next baby was coming. And uh, it was the only way that I could, I could get through. It, it was honestly the, the, the crying and the uncomfortable um, I had to change my diet a lot, uh, with our second child. It was, it was difficult. It was hard to manage. But the one thing that people kept telling me was, you know, and it doesn't necessarily help you in the moment, but it's like, it is a very brief time in their life. And it's like, you'll, you'll wake up one day and it will have, have shifted and, you know, hopefully he'll be in a better position, but it's while you're going through those, those sleep issues and the feeding issues, they are so draining. Amen to that, that is true. Helen, do you have any questions for Jen? I have so many questions. Hi, Jen. Hi. Um, so I have a 10 year old, as Monica said, just one child, which I sometimes think that one is more difficult than four because she's, you know, got no one to play with that when she wants to play with mom and dad and we're in the middle of something. But you talked about, um, conflicts with your husband in terms of parenting and my husband and I certainly have some different ideas about parenting and what's what was if you can talk about it your most difficult conflict and how did you resolve it you know I don't know that we really have ever fully had conflicts in our parenting journey that we couldn't come to a resolution on I I do know I'm a very type A personality that probably shouldn't surprise anybody, but my husband was cleaning out his office, uh, which I am in. He's my fifth child, as it's very clearly <laughs> obvious behind me, but um, he was cleaning out his office a, a week or two ago, and he found this little plaque that says, I am not bossy, I'm the boss, and he brought it and set it next to my bed, and it's it's been there for the last like 10 days. And I'm like, well, that's, that's great. So like anytime we have a problem now, you truly know what the answer is and where it lies, and you don't need reminding. So we don't have any conflicts or issues anymore. <laughs> I'm just uh, no, it's, Seriously, some of the things that I think we have had um, conflicts on have been things that have been really important to me. Um, which were co-sleeping and also the length of time that I've nursed our kids. I am in a fed is best camp straight up. Like that's the, that's it. Right. However you have to feed that baby is how you feed that baby. But for me, breastfeeding was very easy. I, I should, I take that back. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. It was never easy, but it was something that I felt very inclined to do almost to any, to any end for myself. Um, and for our first three kids, you know, I nursed them a year, two years, two years. And then with our last child, she developed some pretty serious oral aversions during a, um, sort of a misdiagnosed strep infection when she was an infant and she stopped eating. So I had to keep nursing her and here she is three and a half and she'll still nurse once every other day. And it's a big conflict for my husband and I, because that sort of obviously went beyond the, um, went beyond, beyond the, it's just, I'm nursing her for, for health reasons. And now I'm just nursing her for comfort because that's her security. And that's been a really big, this has been a big disagreement for us, you know, it, and, and he, I think he, he's a really good guy and he just truly yields to my maternal instincts, whatever those are. And I, I know a lot of guys aren't like that, but my husband is truly, I think a pleaser in his core. Um, and I, I, I never, my, never my, question. You my what? Husband, yeah, I said, you're lucky. My husband's very type A as well. And we've got a type A daughter. So our house is very interesting. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But the one thing I will say for your, your future moms out there, we had a big, pro I had a big problem breastfeeding and I didn't find out until almost two months in that Olivia's frenulum was too tight. Oh yeah. 
about that, but it's definitely an issue because I didn't even know what a frenulum. I know what she's getting at, though. I have yeah. a nephew with it. Really, really a tough time. So. It, it, is, it is very hard. And it, it's it's one of those things that for me, and, and we talk, we've talked so much about breastfeeding on our TikTok channel and on um, and on our podcast because, you know, you, you're almost like admonished if you do, admonished if you don't, admonished if you stop too soon, admonished if you go too long. It's like you just can't do anything right. Um, and it just, I was taught the wrong way to breastfeed at Cedar sinai Like that's just really what it comes down to. And after a week of tears and not really, you know, being able to make it feel natural, I was like, you know what? I've watched women my entire life breastfeed. I know how it's done. Go out of my room, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to nurse my baby. And I took her out of the stupid football hold. Sorry if you love the football hold. I took her out of it, <laughs> her, you know, crossed my body, nursed her the way I thought I was supposed to nurse her. And then the rest has been history. It's been um, a really good experience, but I really can relate to it being a tough, tough thing. Well, yeah, yeah and th there is a lot of judgment, sadly, that goes around. Like it, how long you should, there's issues about, well, the the intelligence of the child, like you have yeah, to breastfeed them for a year or they're yeah. not going to be... They want to have an right. immune system. Well, right. And my, the, my mother, things. she announced that she bottle fed us. And I was like, well, that explains you know, my, a lower <laughs> score that I could have gotten on the SAT. If I had attachment to... issues. All exactly. Of it. <laughs> uh, that's the reason. Um, Leslie, do you have any questions? Well, you know, when you were talking to Caitlin, you said something that really hits home with me because I had this epiphany when my kids were probably you know, 12 and nine or whatever about multitasking. And you were talking about, you know, like the, you know, and I've always, I've told my kids, I'm like, you know, you can only do something as many things as you're trying to put into one thing. Right. I mean, you know, if you're trying to do five things at once and you're doing at most 20% on each, so to speak, you know, so on and down the road. But um, I mean, as you're kind of multitasking and we're all multitasking women, um, you know, do, have you taken on that philosophy? And then if so, like, how are you separating those out? Cause I really, I kind of, I mean, I can't say I never multitask obviously, cause I think we're all a screen world and obviously we're all doing a lot of different things, but when it comes to your marriage, your children, your work, your, you know, so on and so forth, it's like, how are you, you know, do you feel like that you've hit a good stride in trying to give all to each section a hundred percent at a time versus the multitasking? Well, I, I mean, just, just so you know, I, I am a thousand percent a multitasker. I mean, e everybody laughs. Like I can literally be editing a cut of a podcast and, you know, zooming with someone for a charity event and, you know, helping fix my child's shoe and, you know, simultaneously sort of like feeding my husband, you know, a grocery list or a snack list. I, the multitasking for me is something that I have always been a rock star at and i really feel for people who don't have that um as like a producer that's just who i am i have to be doing a lot of things all the time um and my husband and i that's actually to be honest with you probably one of our biggest fights because i'll start five projects and they will all get completed they do all get done in the day but I will finish them all in various stages, whereas he'll start something and finish it, you know? Um, so for me, multitasking has been the only way that I can get anything done. I mean, whatsoever. There's, there's just no, there's no two ways about it. It, it has to be that I can, you know, read a, read a script while I'm nursing a baby or, um, give notes on a podcast while I'm, you know, got kids in the bathtub. I have to be able to do things at the same time. Otherwise, I mean, I think once you become a mom, right, the idea of having a singular focus for anything forever is gone, right? So the more that you can kind of juggle at a time, the better. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't stop down and take time for yourself and take time to recharge. It's otherwise, I think you go crazy, right? Yeah. Did know, I answer I, your question? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, that's great. I um I wrote a book a few years ago called Comeback Moms, and the one thing that we talked about is moms make great employees later. Like once you've you know they're at an age where they can go back to work because they have done that multitasking, they have worked like that. Well, Jen, we were so thrilled and excited that you were able to join us. It's been so much fun, and we encourage everyone to tune in to Hi, my name is Mom, and they can find you um, on Instagram at Hi, my name is Mom official or at at Jen Meyer Culp. So thank you so much for joining us and please thank give our you. regards to your two co-hosts and we look forward to listening 
to, to your show as well. Thank you and so much I, for having me. Yes, thanks for being here. And we can't believe the time is up, but we want to thank our sponsor, Good Company, which is a family-owned and thoughtfully curated boutique specializing in contemporary women's clothing featuring several brands produced in the United States. Mom and founder Mar Mallory K Carroll and her team of dedicated women also carry vintage jewelry, apothecary, and eclectic home decor items. You're sure to find the perfect outfit or home fashion or gift, uh, or gift at Good Company, and you can find them online at goodcompany.shop. And you can find us on the UBN Go Network, on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast, or on our Instagram at Inside the Moms Club. We have a website, insidethemomsclub.com, and we're on Facebook. So please check us out on social media. Again, I just can't believe the time has passed, but we'll be back next time with more celebrities and extraordinary moms just like you. We know that your me time is precious and valuable. Thanks for sharing it with us. As we always say, our motto is, if you don't laugh sometimes, what happens, Jen? You're gonna cry. You're gonna cry. So just keep <laughs> laughing, moms out there. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time inside the Moms Club.